badly explaining the entire Fate series in 30 minutes. Musashi, my beloved. This video is sponsored by Honkai Impact 3rd. Gamers, gamers, gacha gamers. You know me, I love my 2D girls and Honkai Impact 3rd has the cream of the crop. A free-to-play 3D action role-playing mobile game developed and published by MiHoYo. The same makers of Genshin Impact, which speaking of which, they're having a collaboration event right now. Fischl Why is it always Fischl? Like, whether it's a Max Store video, whether it's a meme video, whether it's a manga panel official, why is this fish will always show up in my streams? We'll be joining as a new Valkyrie with her companion Ozzy, along with Kaching, where you can free more powerful forces for Kaching to fight against the enemy, which includes the more powerful the Wolf of the North in this world. And most amazingly, both of these characters are completely free. Sorry, what does this word mean? I've never heard this word before as Amazing. a gacha gamer. New yeah. players to join the game now can win over 100 free supply cards by completing missions and can even enter a sweeps stake to win a big mystery prize. And also from July 12th to August 12th, Honkai Impact 3rd will be collaborating with Bubble Tea brand Kung Fu Tea in the US and Canada. So you can join the event for a chance to win limited merch and an iPhone 12. So what are you waiting for? Download Honkai Impact 3rd today and join the events to win some great prizes. Links and info in the description below. And with that said, let's get on with the video. Look, all I can say, at least it's not the stupid, do you like, which do you like meme that keeps popping up in my timeline of shorts it's do you like shenha do you like eula it it, it has become just the meme i'll, t I'll at this point i'll take fischl I'll, I'll take fischl over do you like shenha do you like eula it's it's such a weird meme format the fate series is one of the most expansive franchises in all of anime uh -huh. in between all the games anime manga light novel visual novels spin-offs it's probably one of the most daunting franchises for any newbie to try to get into a little while ago i made a joke skit called trying to understand the fate franchise based around how confusing the entire thing looked for an outsider looking in uh -huh. and satire aside it was based on many real life conversations i've actually had with fate fans trying to explain the franchise to newcomers and every time that happens i always hear do you want the long version or do you want the short version because Everyone asked for the short version, but even the short version for an outsider can seem like a convoluted mess of information. Thought you were going to give me the short version. This is the short version. But Mate. I, I look into Silmarillion lore. There's a certain level where your brain just doesn't understand what the short version is anymore. Look, I, I could go on tangents about and Caligon the Black. I could go on tangents about the Silmarils, about Feanor. I could go on tangents about Tolkien. Uh, even Kingdom Hearts, actually, despite not actually having played most of the games, and by most I mean, like, almost all of them, right? I've played, like, Earth by Sleep and, like, part of three. Like, I'm, I'm here for the lore. That's why we're here. <laughs> ever since I made that video, and because no one ever actually asked for it, I've always wondered to myself, what is the long version? Yeah. That's why we're here. I'm ready. The Fate franchise fascinates me. Originally created by Kinoku Nasu, what started as just a single Iroge visual novel was turned into a multi-billion dollar franchise with more media than any sane person can wrap their head around. Oh I mean my god. Wasn't there the meme in like, what was it? Was it 2013 or something like that? There was a meme about this guy going around just getting his life absolutely ruined because he didn't know fate was an Eroge at first. And like he, he, someone was just like like showing him like yes no it was an arrow gay, and he just like like you just see like all the hope drained from his face and he just he just kind of loses it. I, lo I love that people we we have entered this point where like what is it Fuamoko from Hollow Live didn't know who Scooby Doo was, and like people don't know that fate is based on an arrow gay. It's just this weird like like we're forgetting certain <laughs> origin content here quote unquote. I don't know. It's very entertaining to me. Just look at all this shit. Can you see how many there is? There's at least five. So it can be easy yeah. to forget how and why people became fans in the first place. That many newcomers may even forget to ask, what is fate even about? Yes. Yes. Don't worry, I got you. The basic premise revolves around a bunch of mages who can summon heroic spirits from Earth's real history or legends to do battle over the Holy Grail, a mythical wish-granting device in what is called the Holy Grail War. Basically, it's a bunch of mages spending all their V-Bucks to organize the ultimate Fortnite, Apex Legend, fucking Minecraft, Hunger Games, Battle Royale between all your favorite people from history and legend yeah. to create 
the ultimate showdown of ultimate destiny. God, I hope my audience isn't too young to understand that reference. Oh my god. Chat, please tell me you understand what he's referencing. Because I sure do. That that was amazing. I remember like listening to that back in like I was in middle school at the time that actually happened. Like, okay. People in chat have restored my faith in humanity. That 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 was a reference of all time. I feel like I'm gonna get comments being like, what is he talking about? What is it what does it mean? <laughs> Holy Grail War, it's just basically nasty going, Wow! <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Let's just cut the video there. That's all you need to know about Fate. Yeah. However, the background and lore of the entire Fate universe is unimaginably deeper than that. So much so that every single spin-off, anime, manga, novel, every single piece of Fate's media takes place in a coherent universe fitting somewhere on a grand timeline, uh -huh. which is also shared with Nasu's other works creating this grand universe known only as the Nasuverse. So you know what I thought would be a good idea? What if I tried explaining the entire Fate timeline? Keyword being thought, implying it was me in the past tense. It was a sheer idea. That's explaining the all the Fate lore and timeline in detail would take hours and hours. I mean, just look at some of these wiki pages. This isn't a wiki page, it's a fucking light novel. Saber lore. That time some slag at a pawn threw a sword at me and I accidentally became the fucking King of England. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> I think he's onto something here. <laughs> So this is more like the long, short version, or is it the short, long version? Short, long is version. It the medium version. It's an excuse to justify all the countless hours I've put into this hellhole. Obviously, there is going to be spoilers, but I'm going to try and keep it focused on the lore and universe and where every series fits in the timeline, rather than what actually happens in any individual series. So hopefully it won't spoil your experience too much if you decide to walk into hell with us. So, with that said, let's start explaining all of fate. It's not too late now, Gone. All we have to do is just turn the camera off and delete the file and no one will ever have to know. I mean, yeah, it, it would be it would be simple to just not. But where's the fun in that? Ah. You see that Giguk? That was Giguk three months ago. Huh? I've been putting off filming this for three fucking months. <laughs> just, just kill me now. <laughs> oh, three fucking months. This is my dissertation all over again. Hello and welcome to my TED talk. To be introducing the Fate timeline, I'm going to be cosplaying the most powerful servant in the history of the Fate timeline. Steve Handjobs. What? But before we get to the Fate timeline, there are a what? few core concepts we need to bang out first so everything makes sense. Firstly is Akasha. See, Fate exists in this grand world of magic and mages where you can summon heroic beings from the past, present and future. And all of this derives from Akasha. What is Akasha? See, Akasha is this metaphysical place that exists outside of time and dimensions that is the source of all events and all the souls and all timelines. And I like using big words to make me sound smart. Basically, okay. everything that's ever happened and everyone you know, you can thank Akasha for it. Okay. 2020 as a whole, thanks Akasha. The chat <laughs> chat himself, Chug Jug's Fortnite remix. Thanks, Akasha. The one time in class you thought you had a silent fart, but you ripped out a fat one and everyone heard it and stared at you and your brain still reminds you about it every time you go about to sleep. Yeah. Fuck you, Akasha. Yeah. So instead of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff, this is more like wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, goopy galaxy, diddly dimension, rickety reality stuff. Where I mean, this makes perfect sense to me. I mean, it, it, this, this, this description of Akasha makes perfect sense. The modern world does not. Timeline and every reality exists at the same time, meaning there are no spin offs. Every fate is canon, life is a line. Yes, that smutty doujin of Minamoto going ada ada on the order order is canon in some timeline. You can't prove me. Wait, what? What was that? Yes, that smutty doujin of Minamoto going ada ada on the order order is canon in some timeline. You can't prove me otherwise. Are you with me? Good. This I don't know about that last one, but yeah, other than that, so far, I'm good. This is important because the end goal of every mage in the Fate universe is to find a way to reach the root of Akasha. But Giga, why do all mages want to find the root of Akasha? Well, I'm glad you asked, probably confused viewer. 
I really hope you're not confused right now, this is just the beginning. Well, this would be a good time to talk about the magic system that exists in the Nasuverse, because as we all know, in this universe, mages exist and use magecraft, aka magic. Okay. Right? Sure. Wrong. No. Incorrect. Okay. Erroneous. Mistaken. Magecraft. I can't think of any more words off the top of my head. What are you, an idiot? <laughs> Why would anyone assume that magic and magecraft are the same thing? Look at this guy. Typical man that can't tell the difference between magic and magecraft. No, 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 no. You got magecraft, the weak source imitation butter. Ooh, I can't believe it's not magic. And then you got the Chad true magic. This is the top tier gourmet shit. This is the shit real mages want to yeah. use. The kind of shit Gordon Ramsay has a taste of and goes, hmm. Finally, some good fucking magic. But this premium shit can only be achieved by mages who view Akasha. And once someone gets that magic, that path to Akasha is cut off, and then the magic can only be used by the direct descendants of that original mage. So they become the origin point for lineages of mages? I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So, so far, the way that how I'm understanding is that most everyone can use magecraft. Magic is the primo wagyu steak, if you will, and only mages that see uh, Akasha are able to do this, but at cost of their own ability, but their descendants can have ability to use magic, which anything, it would be Akasha fusing with the essence of the individual witnessing it and then it passing down through their lineage. I mean, like, I'm following so far. Basically, no one has real magic and they're trying to get to the root of Akasha so they can stop using the peasant dollar store magecraft shit. Oh man, what if the third magic was just the power to create fate porn? But what's stopping all- <laughs> I mean... I mean, artists are their own kind of magical, aren't they? All mages from getting to this mythical place called Akasha. Well, you have this thing called the Counterforce. This is kind of like a safety mechanism that stops the world from going extinct because the Earth is actually alive and has a will, and don't worry about that right now. Uh -huh. And the Counterforce itself is made up of two parts. The collective unconscious will of humanity itself to survive, a liar, and the will of the planet itself, Gaia. Sure. Online. Why is nice. this important? Because the counterforce has powerful defense mechanisms, like being able to summon heroic spirits from Earth's history in order to defend itself, which we call servants. Okay. Sound familiar? I understood that reference. So it'll intervene anyone trying to get to Akasha, aka the goofy galaxy timey wimey place, and mages have to find a way around it. Yeah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Good. If you're already confused, may I introduce to you the phrase everyone in the fate fandom holds in the highest esteem as the holiest words in our gospel. Don't worry about it. Why is the cast of Fate State Night sharing a nice wholesome meal instead of trying to brutally murder each other? I, I mean, I, I, this just makes sense. I, I, don't worry about it is so much of a fix, but I'm just like, that just makes sense. Don't worry about it. How do reality bubbles work? Don't worry about it. What is the moon? Don't worry about Egg. it. Egg? Egg. No, please, please don't worry about it. Please don't ask me what the moon is. I'm not going to fucking talk about the moon. I want to talk about the moon, though. What is the moon? Is it an egg? I knew it. To recap, you have Akasha, the timey-wimey, goofy galaxy, rickety reality place that every mage is trying to get to so they can use the top-tier gourmet true magic. But the only thing stopping them is the counterforce, which they have to try and find a way around. Sure. Did you get all that? Yeah. This is all the background information you need to know. Nice. Before we start the timeline. Yeah. Jesus Christ, we haven't even started the timeline yet. <laughs> you know, originally I wanted to visualize the timeline physically by having things stuck against the wall strung together with a string or something like that. Like Too messy. Like Always Sunny meme. Yeah. But then I soon realized I don't have a wall big enough. Nope. So that's why I'm using the green screen. Definitely not because I want to rip off Nakey Jakey. Now starting right <laughs> at the beginning, before any majors, before any servants, before any Holy Grail wars, you have the Age of God. Mm -hmm. So yeah, apparently right at the beginning of Fate Law, there was this period of time where gods roamed the earth with man, mythical creatures existed, and I shit you not, physics apparently just wasn't a thing. Yeah. yeah, apparently this thing called mystery governed the law of the world, which I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Don't worry about it. Like I just imagined in my head some ancient humans trying to let go of an apple and physics tries to drop it and mystery's like, no, 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 no. We do not do that here. And then the apple just flies <laughs> off the fucking banana. But everything changed when the Sefer Nation attacked. 
or Josepha. This next time period is called Deterioration. This titan called Sepha invaded and destroyed most of the world and was only beaten back by this mighty sword called Excalibur. After the attack, the gods weaken a bit, mystery starts to wane, and physics is like, yo, is, um, is, is anyone gonna drop that apple? Which takes us to separation. So the gods are a little pissed that they can't go down to Earth anymore because they're so weak, so they make Gilgamesh, who's two thirds god. Cause gods don't give a shit about maths apparently. No. With the intention of making him the keystone to connect the gods and the humans. Now for anyone- Please tell me it's canon, he's two thirds god. Please tell me this is canon. Because that is just perfect, I love it. Not familiar with the fate verse, how can I explain Gilgamesh? You know that one meme, is this some peasant joke I'm too poor to understand? <laughs> well, imagine if that meme was reincarnated as a person. That's Gilgamesh. <laughs> so yeah, he decides to rebel and the gods were like, no. This guy? This guy doesn't want to take orders from us? No, come on, come on, you're joshing us right now. This is a prank. Come on, where's the hidden cameras? I'm on MTV Punk, aren't I? <laughs> and so with that, the gods cannot interfere with humans anymore. And thus begins... The Age of Man. From the year 0 AD, the human population explodes, magic and magecraft is replaced with science, and most importantly, physics exists now, guys! Yeah! Nice. I was meant to buy a party popper, but I completely forgot to. Alan, can you, uh, can you edit a party popper in this video, please? Nice. Thank you. <laughs> That's right, screw your mystery. I have E equals MC squared. Okay, remember right at the beginning of this video when I said the Fate franchise was about this thing called the Holy Grail? Well, we can finally start talking about the Holy Grail. See, the Grail is touted as this omnipotent, magical, wish-granting device, and that's only partially true. Mm -hmm. See, around the 1800s, these epic magic gamer girls called the Einsburns family figured out a way to the root of Akasha. That place that gives you true epic gamer magic. By using the Holy Grail to summon seven heroic spirits and then sacrifice them, and using that manner to summon an even greater grail called the Greater Grail, nice. which has access to the root of Akasha. But of course, all the various magic gamer girls and boys couldn't agree on who would actually get access to this magic. So they decided to have a meeting to decide. Yeah. One could even say that it was a magic. The Gathering. Or oh my god, no. No. <laughs> that was bad. Fate, we just call this the Holy Grail War. Which finally leads us to the timelines to all the wars so far. Oh, I can't believe I flunked world history and I'm about to recite the entire history of some fictional war that happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got like the first Holy Grail War, which happened around the 1800s. This is when the three main mage families, the Einsburns, the Tosakas, and the Matos, couldn't agree on who could get access to the Grail. So they were like, guys, we've got a bunch of servants lying about. Tournament arc, tournament arc, tournament arc, tournament arc. Tournament arc. Oh! This was hardly what you'd call a natural war, though, and more like a 3 a.m. brawl at the local mage pub, which ended because. Everyone got bored and time ran out. Yeah. Then came the second Holy Grail War in the 1860s with the same parties involved, but this time everyone went a bit fucking mental because everyone died, nobody won, and future generations were like, wait a minute, do we need rules? What the fuck is a Geneva Convention? <laughs> then came the third Holy Grail War in the 1930s uh -huh. where the church gets involved because they're just like, um, are you using the term Holy Grail? My God. God, are we allowed to copy strike that? And everyone's happy with that because they can enforce the rules. So the church is like, all right, gamers, I want a fair fight. No going for the eyes, no kicking below the belt. And for God's sakes, no summoning any illegal servants. So then the items burn what? summon an illegal servant. And so they get this totally new... Define illegal servant. That's my question. Servant called Angramayu, aka the Angry Mango, who's meant to be this super badass, ultra OP new servant that also wins them the war, except lol JK is actually super weak and dies and is literally so angry he gives the grail food poisoning. Amazing. Then we got the fourth Holy Grail War, which is basically just the events of Fate Zero. I'm not gonna spoil what happens in it. And finally, we have the Grand Sugar Daddy that birthed everything we're talking about. The fifth Holy Grail War, AKA the events of Fate Stay Night. Following Shiro fighting in it, using the power of friendship and fucking, I mean mana transfer. <laughs> and this CG dragon still haunts my nightmares. What's Ooh. important here is that this war has at least three different timelines because the original Fate Stay Night was a visual novel with three different routes. Nice. The Fate Route, Unlimited Blade Words, and Heaven's Feel. Or to put it more simply, you got the Saber Route, the Best Girl Route, 
and the Sakura roots with extra. This implies that Rinto Saka is, in fact, best girl. Extra <laughs> fucking, I mean, mana transfer. What? But it doesn't stop there, because next we got Fate Hollow Anorexia, which is kind of like a sequel to Fate Stay Night, because it takes place six months after the events that happened in there. So you may be wondering which one of the three routes it follows, oh. and the answer is... Yes. 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 So one of the main girls from Fate Stay Night, Rin, is doing some magic experiments, and uh, she does a little bit of an oopsie, and... um. Completely fucks up the space-time continuum. Merging one does. all parallel universes together. And I know what you're thinking. This doesn't sound like a little oopsie. This sounds a bit more like a big oopsie. But it's all good because she looks great in thigh highs. So we're following yeah. this mage Bazette who was dead off screen in the original Fate Stay Night. And she is now alive along with Angra Mayu, aka the Angry Mango. And they're stuck in a Groundhog Day type time loop, living the same four days over and over. And she has to find a way to escape without fading from existence because she was originally dead. And I guess people die if they don't exist. Oh Since most God. of this takes place in a time loop, this is basically just Fate Re-Zero Edition. So you can essentially just call it Fate Zero. Oh, we can't. Right. And you know what? That's basically everything for the flagship Fate series. We did it, guys. <laughs> that was pretty simple, right, guys? What are we missing? Everything. FGO. Fuck. Of course, we are going to have to fill this timeline in with all the other Fate media out there. So let's do the time warp again. I think Giga is the only creator that I've actually seen reference the time warp on stream and or video. Like maybe Vine Sauce, Vinny Vine Sauce is referenced at some point in time, but the amount of respect that I have for Giga just shot through the roof, because like I'm the kind of person that counted Tim Hur uh, Tim Curry's heel taps in the subsequent song, and it was 26 on the elevator. You're welcome. Oh my god. <sighs> Alan, fucking cut that. All right, so let's start with <laughs> Fate Apocrypha. So the Fate Apocrypha timeline is exactly identical to the original timeline, except when we get to the Third Holy Grail War, where well, the timeline was like, you know what? Nazis. Oh, no. Of course it's the fucking Nazis. Oh, no. So the Nazis join the Third Holy Grail War, and instead of there being a winner, the Nazis steal the Great Grail system. And so after that, a Transylvanian Nazi mage guy steals it from the Nazis again. And then I guess the Nazis go on to lose World War II as usual. Yeah. Fast forward to the future, and somehow the entire world finds out about the Great Grail system, and everyone and their dog tries to make a cheap imitation of it. And so because yeah. of this, the Transylvanian Nazi sorcerer guy vows to make the Holy Grail War great again. Oh. Oh no. And so he makes the great Holy Grail <laughs> War. <laughs> I shit you not, this is what it's called. And so now instead of seven servants, you have 14 servants separated into two teams, red and black. That's nice. right, it's a team deathmatch. Team deathmatch! Team, team deathmatch! Death team deathmatch! Team deathmatch! Team deathmatch! Death death Stab it! And so we get to see Ah, fellow code ment enjoyer, I see. <laughs> Was not expecting Team Deathmatch to show up today. He's in red versus black, Mordred is hot, and Astolf will make straight guys question their sexuality and gay guys question their sexuality. And I mean, honestly, all, all that was that was true, yeah. Gay girls question their sexuality. <laughs> and me question my life choices for spending $400 for a dick. Nice. That includes the events of Hitler's Day Night. Next on the menu, we have <laughs> today's menu for Emmy family. Did you... Did <laughs> did you see what I did there? This is, I think, just another alternate ending to the Fifth Holy Grail War, where I guess nobody dies and they all just sit around cooking and playing volleyball and being happy. And this is canon, okay? Do we think or do we know? That's the difference here. <laughs> the numbers, what do they mean? <laughs> they never explain where this takes place on the timeline, but I don't care. They're all happy. Akasha made it. It's canon. Yeah. Like in my mind, this is the reality when someone just tried playing the fake visual novel, but got bored five minutes after reading words and then just left. Yeah. And never came back. Yeah. And then all these characters are just sitting around having a gay old time waiting for the Holy Grail war to start. Yeah. This is what happened. This is the reality where C-Dog VA tried to play fate. All right. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna make a Fate Stay Night bubble, and then I'm gonna put Fate Tiger Coliseum and Fake Unlimited Codes in this bubble because they're just fighting games and they're already beating the shit out of each other in the series anyway. So I guess these are just the filler episodes we never got to see. Yeah. Then we got Fate School Life, which is kind of like a slice of life spin off in the Fate Stay Night universe that also has Adoraxia characters in it. So I guess it goes here. 
Sir, can you tell how I'm sure I am right now? Lord Elmaloy's Case Files. This is basically just CSI magic that takes place after Fate Zero, but before Fate Stay Night, starring Fate Zero's Waver. Except Waver's gone from Daddy Step On Me to uh, 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 oh. Step On Me, Daddy. All right. <laughs> That's the one. Now we get into the manly shit. Fate DJ Khaled, line of Prisma Ilya, is a spin-off where Ilya becomes a magical girl. And instead of summoning servants, the magical girls can use these magical cards to channel the power of a servant. That's cool. And also there's a magical talkie wand, don't worry about it. Nice. Before I properly got into the Fate franchise, I thought that this was just an unrelated spin-off that had nothing to do with the main universe, but no. Not only does this directly diverge from the main timeline, but it has two separate universes within its own universe. I love it. It's a fucking Ilya multiverse. And the beginning of the Ilya multiverse doesn't even have Ilya in it. Amazing. Oh, God, I love you so much, Faye, but you just don't make things easy, do you? All right. I mean, to be fair, if they made it easy, would we enjoy it nearly as much as the question? I'm going to try and do my best, so stick with me here. The first universe is the one detailed in the movie Oath Under Snow. Following this girl called Miyu, which is why we call this the Miyuverse, because her name is Miyu and she's the child of God, don't worry about it. Worry she's about taken it. in by Shiro, and then they have another Holy Grail War, but not the usual Holy Grail War, but the Ironsworth Holy Grail War. Can you guess why it's called the Ironsworth Holy Grail War? Because it was made by the Eins. Shiro <laughs> then sends Miyu to an alternate universe, which we call the Iliaverse, which is all sunshine and rainbows, where the fourth Holy Grail War didn't happen and Kiritsugu's father of the year. You got cute girls doing cute things, cute girls doing magical things, and cute girls doing each other. Whoa. This is the universe where season one and two of Prisma Ilia happens, but then you have season three, which jumps back into the Miyuverse. And if you think huh. that complicates the timeline, how about this little knowledge of Nugget? So in the original Face Day Night, Ilya is 18. Nice. She's 18. She's older than Shiro. But in the Iliaverse, she's the same age as when the timelines diverge, which theoretically should make her the same age as she was in Fate Stay Night. But she's not. Nope. And the series makes it very clear that she is under 18. So which is it, Fate? Which is it? I need to know. Don't worry about it. It's Pause, champ. Don't worry about it. Just once you get time and space magic involved, don't worry about it. It's fine. You know, I would say don't worry about it. But I'm pretty sure the FBI are going to do that for me. FBI, right, open up. Moving the fuck on from this mess of a legal situation. Your fate, also known as the Fate Extra Universe. This splits off from the third Holy Grail War in the Angry Mango timeline, where all the world's mana dries up because some kind of event yeah. so in the 2030s all the mages turned into hackers and they tried to hack the moon because the moon has a supercomputer on it that was placed there by aliens that they found yeah. and so inside this supercomputer moon there exists this entire digital world and so the supercomputer moon is hosting a virtual reality holy grail war because it's actually alive yeah <laughs> does this not make sense this makes perfect sense actually i'm also to be to be fair i am also the odd one that as i, as I stated previously We'll just debate Silmarillion lore and deep dive like magic systems. I, I am, for all intents and purposes, the exception to normalcy here. <laughs> I don't realize how ridiculous this sounds until I read it out loud. Don't worry about it. So yeah, it turns out the moon knows shit and you can hack the moon. And it yeah. also has Rin, Sakura, and Kirei from the original Face Day Night, but not the original Rin, Sakura, and Kirei from the original Face Day Night. No. What are you? Stupid. Yeah. They're just characters who look, sound, and dress exactly the same, but they're different. It just happens with parallel realities. Don't worry about it. Are you worrying about it? No. Because I'm not. So you got the Fate Extra games, the Fate Extra Triple C games, and then you got the anime. Fate Extra Last Encore in its own separate timeline that takes place in the year 3000. What's and happening? Rin's great, great, great granddaughter. It's just fucking Ren. Fate Grand Order. <laughs> oh, God, you're not going to make me break down Fate Grand Order. Right. Mm, yes, we are. Oh, baby. That's the one. In fact, isn't Musashi like like uh, intrinsic to Fate Grand Order from my understanding? At least the American version of Musashi is intrinsic to FGO. Yeah, I think, I think Musashi is just FGO. All right. 
Now we're truly in hell. So Fate Go is a mobile gacha game along some anime adaptations where the first Holy Grail War never happens, the world is fucked for some reason, and you have got to travel back in time to various points in history to fix the fucking timeline. Yeah. And every different timeline you fix is called Singularities. Basically, yeah. imagine Fate Back to the Future, except there are like seven sequels, all with different diverging timelines, and you're not trying to fuck your mum. You're just trying to fuck all the servants. Yeah. All right, so for simplicity's sake, I think it would just be easier if I just draw out the fake go timeline. It's gonna be, it's gonna be scribbles. Ah! Yep, yep. And then here in its own corner is just Fate Prototype, which is Kinokunasu's original concept for Fate, where Ooh. King Arthur's actually a guy? Heresy. Get, get out of here with your damn historical inaccuracies. <laughs> so essentially, this is just a non-existent project because that reminds me of the person on social media in the past year that was just like, oh, what, what were they talking about? Um, it wasn't Emperor Nero. It was one of the Roman emperors, right? I think it was Caesar. And they're like, oh, well, actually, Caesar wasn't a man. He was he was actually a woman. And it's like... <laughs> okay, do you, you want to get some citations on that? Like, some peer reviews, some peer reviews on that paper? <laughs> I don't know why that made me remind me of that, but that was just funny. <laughs> the only thing that exists is a 12 minute trailer that was made purely for fan service. Which is even more bizarre when you consider Fate Prototype Fragments of Sky Silver, which is the prequel to Fate Prototype. They made a prequel, Amazing. a full light novel prequel, to a 12 minute commercial. Like, did I really think Fate fans are that hungry for content? <laughs> a Type Moon just sitting there being like, all right, Fate fans, open wide. Oh. Yes, actually. Th this this could actually be more true than not considering the origins of, of Fate. Oh, content. Oh, <laughs> give me anything. <laughs> and then this prequel to a project that basically doesn't even exist has a side story called Fate Labyrinth. A side story. This is why Tsukihime fans are on Suicide Watch. <laughs> <sighs> you can tell that line was written months ago because... um. Yeah, where the fuck did this come from? What's and happening? all of this would be a completely alternate universe with no connection to the original universe, but I shit you not, one of the characters has a dream that connects this universe to the Fate Stay Night universe. I love it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. It's literally canon by dream. All right, I think we're getting close to the end. Next is Fate Strange Fake. This is a light novel series that takes place after the Fifth Holy Grail War in America, where they do their own Holy Grail War with hookers and blackjack, written by the same guy who did Barkano. Yeah. As a recording, we don't know if this follows on from the main flagship timeline or is part of an alternate universe, but what we do know is that there's a servant called Watcher and it's literally just a fucking whale in the sky. Space I'm sorry, whale. I must have missed the legend where a fucking flying whale saves Earth. Does Free Willy count as a legendary hero of history <laughs> now? That's fake type red line. It's Tokyo in the 1940s. The Nazis are at it again, but this time so are the Japanese military. It's oh. the third Grail War with seemingly no other connections to any other Grails, and it's a manga drawn by the Demon Slayer mangaka. We got <laughs> Fate Requiem. Not a lot about this is known right now because it's not been officially translated, but what we do know is that it's set in the future after some kind of Holy Grail War, and somehow, everyone has their own holy grail and also yeah. there's this new servant called voyager who i guess is the voyager space probe except i have no fucking clue how a space probe becomes a servant let alone a blonde show to boy don't but worry about it. it it just makes sense it just works let alone a blonde show to boy space probe servant and don't tell me to worry about it because i'm not can you see how much I'm not worrying about it? I am not worrying about it. He's clearly worrying about it. It, it, it. He shouldn't worry about these things because it's just going to stress him out. But seriously, how the fuck? <laughs> and finally, in a bubble within its own bubble within its own fucking dimension is Carnival Phantasm, where all the fake characters and other characters from Nasu's other works are just hanging out, I guess. Doesn't make any sense. I have no idea where this fits in the timeline. I think this is just a bubble reality where Akashi got fucking drunk. Yeah. And that's it. I can see it. That is the long version. Kinda. Oh, but Giga, what about the rest of the Nazi verse? Are you gonna do that as well? He's not gonna worry about it. How about no? How about Originally, no? this was meant to be a grand <laughs> video where it talks about all the funny and ridiculous things I found out about fate lore as a whole. But when I started it, I kind of realized I'm gonna need 20 minutes just to explain the fucking timeline. Yeah. So you know what? This may just be the first part in a multi-series lecture from hell. Because the worst thing about fate 
is that after going through all the timelines, after connecting all the lore, after spending far too many hours consuming fate media and reading pages upon pages of wiki articles, it kind of makes sense. Oh god, this chart actually makes sense to me. The entire Yeah, I mean like from an outsider looking in, I mean this this seems pretty accurate. This seems like it makes sense. My timeline is actually the simplest part of fate lore. Fate is just an all-encompassing hole that just gets darker and gloomier the deeper you go down. People wonder what's at the bottom of the abyss in Maiden Abyss. It's just the fucking entrance to the fate hole. You want the real <laughs> short version of fate newcomers? You watch either of these two, and then watch this, and then watch whatever the fuck you want. Or you know what? Fuck all this. Start with the spin-off series, start with lesbian lollies kissing, start with fate masterchef, fuck, start with the dojinshis for all I care, just ignore all the shitstorm going on in the comment section right now. The reality is, it doesn't really matter where you start, as long as it looks interesting to you, then go for it. The problem is, there's so many people who are obsessed with optimizing the perfect read and watch order, that they forget that if you enjoy the experience, and it gets you into fate, then who the fuck cares what order you watch it in? So, this is actually relevant, and I'm going to say that Giga gets the W on this one, the big fat W, because, like, as somebody who is a fan of Code Geass, which has an incredibly, like, in comparison to Fate, an incredibly linear timeline, but because it does diverge with uh, Re 1, Re 2, Re 3, and then Resurrection, right? Like, there, are, I still get things in my feed that are like, oh, the correct way to watch Code Geass in 2023, and it's just like... Bro, who cares? Like, at the end of the day, I have been, like, forced off of series because people just start being super controlling about how I should watch something. It's actually why I don't watch a lot of series. Like, I'm very picky with my time, if you can't tell. And so, like, you know, when something like this interests me, it's... I, and I did this with Kingdom Hearts as well. So Kingdom Hearts is one of those series that I know a, a fair bit about. And unironically a fair bit about it more than people who have played all the damn entries in the game up through three before remind i legitimately got into an argument with ex-roommates where they're like oh well no no ericus is dead anywhere no fuck spoiler i don't even care it's not spoiler territory it's the games have been out right oh well ericus is this, this was prior to three's release right this was like 2.8 2.9 time and it's like well ericus isn't dead you know or no, eric they were saying ericus was dead and i'm like no he's not his keyblade is still there if he was dead his keyblade would vanish. well no 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 he, he's dead but aqua then was able to inherit the keyblade and it's like well i mean he's technically dead but his essence isn't technically gone or there was a whole argument about it and then you know three comes out and ericus you know is was still around in some capacity that's why his keyblade was still around there was a whole argument about it i know somebody in the comment section got to try to pick it apart this was two years ago in a situation that i really didn't want to be in like please cut me some slack on that what i'm trying to say is that like i can start from points in any timeline in any series that i actually enjoy like how i've never actually watched like even like 90% of original Naruto. Like, people are going to be like, excuse you, <laughs> Kip? You react to Swag Kage all the time. You talk about Naruto like it's second nature to you. I mean, yeah. I mean, I honestly started about like maybe like after Hidan Kakazu and then I just kind of read from there. Like, I've, I probably haven't even read half of Naruto, if not Boruto, but I just keep up with it, you know? You can enjoy a series and not follow quote-unquote correct watch orders. And anyone that's going to tell you the correct watch order, if they're if it's uns if you're not asking for it, and they're unsolicited saying you need to do it this way, who cares? Solid W for Gaguk. Look, memes aside, the Fate lore may be a convoluted mess to unravel, but it is an awesome franchise. It's a series that can have amazing fights with balls to the walls action and magical moments that cut deep into your heart. And then Thomas Edison shows up as a lion. Nice. Because if you've reached the end of this video knowing nothing about fate, and this is the video that's convinced you to give it a try, what the fuck is wrong with you? This? Did Kip just get called out on stream? <laughs> you know, uh, would you like an itemized list, Gigguk? <laughs> Because I can supply one. <laughs> this guy, you interested in fate? Yeah. Oh, God, why didn't you just listen to me the first time and go with the short version? You know what? Fuck this. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing fate anymore. I'm literally going to go crazy. I feel that. You know what? I lie. This isn't even the long version. I told you, it's the short, long version. Don't worry about it. 
Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you again to Honkai Impact for sponsoring me today. And also thank you very much to Ivido, The Walto, Pain Patchett, Elliful, Basil, and everyone else on my Patreon for supporting me for this month. But especially Garrett and Lucas for being my fate gurus and guiding me through this hell that is the fate hole. I love Honestly, it. you couldn't have done it without you two. So thank you very much for being my gurus and thank you very much for helping me do the research for all the information I've put in here. And also thank you very much to everyone on my Patreon Discord server for fact checking this video before it went live. Basically what I'm trying to say is if anything in this video is inaccurate or wrong, you can blame an entire Discord server for it. Something's still probably wrong though. And if you want to join the monthly calls where literally someone mentions fate every fucking month, which is how this video got started in the first place, check out my Patreon. Or don't, please. You don't need any more people talking about fate. But yeah, this video has been in production for way too long, mostly because the groundwork was done last year. And I really hope you enjoy the start of this video because it took a lot of work. And I don't know if you could tell, but I had a really, really fun time filming this video. Me and my editor have been putting off working on this video for so long because we knew how much work it would take. But yeah, as I said earlier, this probably won't be the only Fate video I put out because we've done way more research than what I've put into this video. So I hope you're excited for the next one because both me and my editor are Really looking forward to working on another video like this. Right, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Such a joker. <laughs> anyway, that's it from me. No further updates. I've been Giguk and... I hope you enjoy the hell we're about to walk into. It's great. I'm ready. Because I'm not. I need it. All I could see in the background was just the thighs. The, the thigh on that uh, that wall art. And that was kind of great, actually. I didn't. I haven't had. It. I haven't looked at wall art in a hot minute, just because we don't have anime stores anywhere here in Idaho. This was excellent. I absolutely love this. And if there is another that comes out, I uh, assure you that I will. Uh, will be. Will be watching it. This was awesome. I can't recommend this enough. This was a really. I'm glad that it got a lot of attention, and I hope it gets a lot more. This was absolutely amazing, and uh, highly recommended. Thank you, Gigak.